Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Tucker and Crowley Report. We have Franklin Tucker, senior editor of the Belmontonian, and I'm Mike Crowley. So, Franklin, it's Groundhog's Day, and apart from the news that we're going to have an early spring, what else have we got? In That's the right. News? It, uh, I did. I did uh, get up at around seven thirty this morning to watch the uh, groundhog from wherever that is in Pennsylvania. Um, uh, so uh, well, the big story this week, of course, is the uh, amount of the override that the uh, uh, select board has approved, and okay. that, and and you know it, it came down to two. Um, uh, Two, two, two variations of, of an override. One was for 7.5 million, and the other one was for 8.4 million. Now, the 7.5 million basically would would uh, keep the uh, uh, the uh, full time um, uh, equivalent uh, uh, personnel to stay the same. You know, it would, okay. keep, it would keep personnel. Now, the uh, what does the 8.4 do? It, it 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 allows for investments, especially on the school side. Um, you know, there there was an argument being made by the school committee, um, which was successful, that said that uh, if they could um, uh, get a, a extra money, especially for SPED, uh, they could start moving SPED from a lot of uh, um, out of district uh, t uh, learning and bring it inside. So that that would start moving uh, students uh, away from being uh, taught you know, in other areas and, and bring them back uh, at a, uh, a less expensive uh, site, which would be at the uh, uh, Belmont uh, school, at, at the uh, high school. Well, so let me ask you, Franklin, that's that's, um, that's sort of a long-term project where investments now may yield savings in the town budget, um, you know, two, three years down the road. Um, I, I guess I have a question for you. You know, some people have been talking about um, the override amount, um, the override amount needed as being um, as high as 15 million for the next three years. Um, and, and so uh, we, I also know that we have a select board that's been intent on keeping the override um, at at um, a level that they think that the, the, the voters will approve, and, and that's south of, of 10 million. Um, and so they've settled on 8.4 million, but um, um, are we making any sacrifices of existing town services or school services at a level of 8.4 million if the assumption is that this, this override will last for three years? Well, that's um, well. That's the. Uh, there's two parts to this override. The first part is the, the numbers, and, yep. and that is so. As um, as uh, Mark Poello, um, who is uh, the longtime uh, serving member on the select board, said, you know, um, we really have to realize that you know we have to pay the money to uh, to to allow um, uh, services to be given to the residents, and. Um, uh, and especially in the schools, you know, so he's not willing to cut that. But the second part of, of it, uh, of this uh, override is something that the select board of the Warren Committee has, has stated, and that is um, they want to have a, uh, a compact with the residents. It's basically saying that they're going to do two things. One is to um, uh, bend the curve in terms of expenses. Uh, try to find ways of, of giving revenue, uh, increasing revenue, uh, and um, and be upfront with with the, with the residents. You know that um, they they are going to make a good faith effort and um, to um, find ways of of um, of uh, you know, like I said, uh, decreasing the um, uh, the amount of expenses and costs and. Uh, so that that's where, where they're going to be going. You know, that, that's that, that's the one thing that they've always said. And that is, uh, you know, the, the residents won't vote for an override, especially at a, a $8.4 million rate, unless you tell them we're going to be spending money in, in these areas and we're going to try to control cost. You know, some of that, those areas, um, um, one area that uh, Mark Pololo was uh, um, uh, basically pushing forward with is, um, having at least uh, double the amount of money that it goes into sidewalks. You know, this would be targeted uh, money that would uh, go for uh, areas such as uh, spent, uh, spent, uh, special ed um, costs and also um, 
uh, sidewalks. You know, right. certain aspects of this, and they're going to be, and they're going to be very frank. They they don't want this money just to go into an, an open account. They're also going to set. They're also going to set up a, a new um, uh, an account, um, a, a, a basically a free cash stabilization account. Any free cash that's at the end of the year that after. Uh, after uh, the uh, town puts away a certain amount um, as part of its, uh, you know, budgetary um, um, standards, um, that money is now no longer going to be just used for um, uh, um, uh, to, to fill a, a strategic, um, um, uh, I should say, a structural gap in the budget. And, and so to be clear, it never has in its entirety. Right. That's, that's exactly right. And uh, so that what they're going to do is establish a, a stabilization fund. And that money is going to be directed toward one-time um, uh, uh, costs. Um, and a lot of that will have to do with capital expenses and infrastructure. Um, okay. uh, so so it, a lot more discipline, something that um, um, Jeff Lubian, the, uh, the head of the uh, Warrant committee has always been has always been harping on, and that is, we, we can't use free cash uh, to to to, uh, to 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 fill the gap uh, year after year. And yet, some would argue that that we probably will still have to do that for the foreseeable future. So let me ask you, Franklin, um, this is a three year override. That is right. That's what they're. Uh, Proposing, okay. and, and but you know, uh, in in 2015, the last time uh, the, uh, a budget override, a, a, a proposition two and a half override passed, uh, that was expected to be three years. It turned out to be five and a half years. So, okay. and there's always hope that uh, you can stretch that even further, and uh, even you know, and and try to find savings everywhere you can in in the town. All right, Franklin. So um, the override amount is set, and. Um, um, that goes before the um, uh, the next step for that is it goes before the voters um, right. on April second. That's right. It only has to win by one vote, uh, but uh, if it doesn't pass, we can talk about uh, what the um, implications are for the, especially the schools if, well, if we don't have a, a thing, no things will be quite devastating. It will. All right. So next up, um, the the police department, the Belmont Police Department, has a new dog. I That's understand. Right. And it's not one of these fierce dogs that bark at you all the time and, and chase criminals. This no. is a comfort dog. A and his comfort name, dog. Name is Bingo. Bingo it's, was his it, name. Oh, yes. It's a. It's. I don't know dog breeds. It's just one of those fluffy small ones that you know. You go, oh, isn't that? Aren't you a good boy? You know. So, so what's the rationale bef behind the police department having a comfort dog? Well, uh, it is that um, in case of uh, you have, let's say, any kind of incident. That the police are involved with it can be anything from you know a, a criminal investigation or or even just you know uh, just going around and doing police stuff um you may have people who are a, you know you may have residents who are a little upset maybe a little nervous this police dog will you be able to cuddle it put it in your pocket <laughs> it's really small so you could have some fun with that um, it's part of, uh, we have, um, the, the town should, uh, um, uh, I should say that the, the police department, uh, thanks, uh, the Allison's, um, the, this, the, um, this was provided by the Stanton foundation. That's is that right. right. The Stanton foundation and, uh, and Liz Allison, who she's, is one of our she's a co-director of the co-director and she's one of, uh, great Belmontonian. Uh, so, you know, she, she did this on her own and, um, uh, we have to thank the Allison's for that. Graham and uh, Olivia. All right. Well, thank you for the comfort dog. I'm I'm sure that, that I can't wait to, to run around the town with it. I'm sure that Bingo will be providing a great deal of comfort. All right. So um, next up, uh, the multi generational uh, path around the clay pit pond. Um, we have a status update of sorts. That's right. We do, and it has to do with the. Uh, uh, building committee, the uh, middle and high school building committee. Okay. You may think that because the building in the high school, that that new building is complete, we wouldn't need the building committee. Well, the building committee is still around to do, to uh, basically um, 
tie up the uh, loose ends uh, from their work. There's a and lot of close out uh, kind of activity that exactly, needs to take place. Exactly, and there's a lot of, of things that they want to do, but they do want to close that committee. They don't want this to be an active committee. And that's simply because that you just want to end this, you know, sometimes. So, so what so, happened? So, so among the unfinished business was the um, the, the rebuilding of, of this um, path around the, the clay pit well, pond. Well, there wasn't really a complete path around the clay okay. pit pond. And what, what, what was, it was, it was done as a multi-generational, um, it, it went through um, a, uh, a, a, a um, it was picked up by the uh, uh, school because the school, okay. because the path is going to go right by yeah, the, school. Right by so, the school. So, so you had the building committee have some say in what was being done and, and costs. Well, it turns out that uh, the town is, uh, that, that, that this path is, is taking a long time. And, it, and for one reason or another, the town has decided that, you know, we don't want this to be the only thing that the building committee is still doing. So uh, it is now, um, uh, uh, Patrice Garvin ha has told me that, uh, yes, uh, the community path will be, uh, be taken over by the town um, I believe they will have a a a, uh, a community um, a community pres preservation uh, act uh, grant okay. to, to finish it basically. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Franklin. Um, as always, you can find more of Franklin's reporting at uh, belmontonian.com. Be sure to check it out and um, tune in next time. We'll see you then.